Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Wanted to do a little bit of a different video from what I normally do, talking about this World War II ammo and kind of covering the layout of how to read it. I just got some SS ammo over here. Of course, this one is an SMK I've had for a little bit. So I'm gonna be introducing the video with this because the label is, a, is quite a lot cleaner. I'm gonna to try to focus mostly on the layout. That way you can kind of apply this to your own ammo box. Um, because there's a lot of production, or I should say manufacturer numbers and codes and all that on here, which yours will not have those exact ones, but um, I am going to have, I, I will explain what these are on mine, uh, but I'm also going to have links to the sources I have found below in the comments, or in the description. And all the information I'm going to be providing here, you can find it elsewhere, but uh, I, th I think this will just be a kind of helpful video to compile it, because I did have to go to several places to get all this information. So, with that out of the way, let's get started on this Patronin SMK, or Spitzgeschoss mit Kern, which is Spitzer bullet with a core. That core, in this case, is a seal core. At the time, this was considered a armor-piercing round, which is pretty interesting, I think. So that is line one. Line two is P31510L39. So what this means is P315, this is the manufacturer code. Now, on other boxes that you have, depending on when they're made, so let me just skip down a little bit for just a sec just to explain this. If you look, well, actually, it's in quite a few places here, but this is 1939, and back in 1939, Germany was still uh, masking where they were actually manufacturing a lot of their ammo because of restrictions from World War I and all that. So they used this instead. If you look on later production, which, uh, for example, on these SS, these are both from 1943. You can see the format there is a little bit different, which I will talk to, uh, which I will talk about when I get to them. But just something to keep in mind. So you'll have a little bit of a discrepancy there, whether you have early war or possibly even pre-war ammo compared to mid or late war. So in this case, P315, this manufacturer code, if I'm pronouncing this right, uh, and pardon me if I'm not pronouncing it right, is, so this just means Merkisches Vollwerk out of Strasbourg. Next, moving here to this 10, this is the lot number, and these are sequential within any given year, which in this case, 1939. Moving on to the third line here, which is quite a bit smaller in text. These uh, these lines keep getting smaller, so they'll be a little bit hard to read. Um, there we go, it focused. So so what this says is just nitrocellulose, gewehr, rifle, and then blechen, something like that. Uh, I'm not, this is a bit of a hard, hard word for me, but at any rate, and then you just have pulver here. What this just means is rifle powder flake, more or less so. Pretty straightforward right there, and this is just the dimensions of it. For 7.92 or 8 millimeter Mauser, it's always going to be the same measurements there. And then this right here, if you see, it says MOG 1939-44. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to this MOG here in just a sec, but to just talk about these numbers here. So 1939, that's the year, of course, and then 44 is the lot number. Now MOG, uh, this is a different format of the manufacturer code. Uh, again, I'll have a link to that in the description, but this just stands for Deutsche Spring Chemie uh, out of Moshri. So that is the powder line. So, so far, uh, I, I don't think I actually mentioned this yet, but we've got the complete loading, SMK. We've got the manufacturer of the final cartridge here on the second line. And then here we have the powder manufacturer and powder information. On the next line, we switch to Wonderful Fraktur, which is a cool looking font that is extremely hard to read. So, so this is the case composition. You can see there's an S star here and another lot number here. I will talk a bit about this. I will talk a bit more about this when I get to the head stamp. Admittedly, I don't know a huge amount about this line and if there's too much relevant information, but again, you've got the manufacturer, P315, and then lot numbers and all of that sort of thing. Then on the last line, fifth line here, we have the primer information, and if you have tracers, the information on the tracers will be there as well. 
In this case, I did say this was a, one of the cleaner labels, and it is, but it's still a little bit hard to read. So what this says, again, P315, that's the same manufacturer code as up here. Uh, and then if you can read this, uh, this is describing, this number is the type of primer it is. So during World War II, they had corrosive as well as non-corrosive primers. The important part here is the part that's pretty hard to read, and that says 88. Uh, what that indicates is primer type 88, you can think of it like, and uh, that just means corrosive. These are corrosive primers. And then last, you have DWM and another lot number. DWM is another manufacturer. This one stands for Deutsche Waffen und Munitions Fabriken. Um, slightly made that an English pronunciation, but anyway. So that is how to read that. Next, let me cover the SS rounds then, and then I will get to the actual head stamps, opening these up and talking about the ammo itself. So, let's look at these two in tandem here. They are pretty much identical, aside from the wear on the boxes themselves. So, I will just use this bottom one because it's easier to read just a little bit. So starting on the first line here, 15 rounds of Schweres Spitzgeschoss, which just means like heavy Spitzer. Uh, 1943 OXO-1, so again, uh, similar sort of pattern as on the SMK, however now we have an OXO here, or a, a letter code instead of numbers. So this OXO means Tuto Metalverka Osnabrück, and I feel like I just butchered that pronunciation completely, but the point still stands, <laughs> that's, that's where it's made. Uh, I will kind of, you know, gloss over. Third line, same sort of thing, but notice here, this is the formatting change I wanted to mention. These two lines, if you can notice, so nitrocellulose, and then down here we have the MOG. So that is the same manufacturer, but notice it's just on two different lines now. Uh, just think of those two lines as being one line. It just makes it a lot simpler when you're thinking about reading various different types of ammo boxes that do have that slightly different older formatting. Uh, just personally how I find it easier to read. You can do you, depending on your almond box or whatever, but so, yeah, that's all the same there, and remember uh, year of manufacture, lot number, measurements, all that. Next line, we have the uh, case information. You can see now, it, it's pretty much the same, won't cover it too much, but notice we do have an ST+, plus, whereas on the SMK, we had an S star, or asterisk looking sort of thing. And then last line, we have a P186, and then all the rest of that. Notice we have a 3040 primer, so these are non-corrosive. Pretty cool. Never actually going to shoot any of these rounds. I kind of like to collect some of this older ammo, but it is cool to know that it is non-corrosive, because I didn't know they actually used that in World War II. And I just went and looked it up, because I realized I didn't know what P186 was, but that is Metalwerk Wolfenbüttel, something like that. Uh, I know I messed up that pronunciation slightly again, but it's all right. Anyway, let's open these up. I'm going to start with the SMK. Here we are. You can see there's the rounds there. One other thing I just realized I wanted to mention really quick is, if you notice right here the, on the fourth line, what looks like a V-E-R, and this is Fracture, so I believe that is an S-C-H, but it looks like an F-C-H. Uh, that just more or less translates to mixed, because these rounds in here, or I should say the cases, are from mixed years of manufacture. Let's go ahead and just take one out here, because uh, they all follow the same sort of formatting. So I'm going to orient it so that this P here is facing upwards. So... You can see the star, S star here, is on the side. So what that indicates is it is the composition of the case itself. This indicates the percentage of copper in the brass, which is pretty cool that they actually show that. Uh, there are a few different marks. Uh, I was also reading on the source that I have linked below where you can find this. You'll see some that basically have an asterisk versus more of a true sort of star, and that pretty much just indicates... It's just like a slight difference between the manufacturers, which, of course, remember, were being masked. So they'll all say P, even though they were from a bunch of different factories. And the actual factory, it does show it on the ammo box. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, but other than that, you can see the same sort of numbers appear here. So we got the P on the top, 
S star, got a 126 at the bottom here, and then a 35. So all the same sort of information, which I will not rehash because that would just be redundant and a waste of everyone's time. It's all the same as was mentioned on the ammo box. Uh, you might, so I bought all of these off of SG Ammo. I did want to mention though, you might want to really analyze the cases. Uh, if something doesn't match up, you know, if you bought these from like a gun broker seller or whatever, then uh, you might be getting ripped off, unfortunately, because I have heard of a few that um, have like a few rare cases they claim, but then the rest of the box is just with much more common rounds. Let's move to the SS rounds now, which are going to be cool because this is the first time I'm opening them. They are a little stuck compared to the SMK. There we go. Had to uh, go off camera. I want—I didn't want to butcher the box. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit hard to open because of some damage and storage. But let's take a round out here. We'll orient this the same way, with the manufacturer being up in this case, OXO, as I mentioned earlier. So. Um, you can see this is pretty cool. We do have a steel case here. Cannot hear the powder shaking. One thing I think is cool is, uh, although, as I mentioned earlier, I would not shoot these, all the SMK rounds, you actually can't hear this on camera, but all the SMK rounds I have um, actually are in extremely good condition. And uh, if I wanted to, I would shoot them. Not going to. Um, these, yeah, I, I would not trust these, though, at all. At any rate, so yeah, there is the manufacturer. And now I wanted to turn this to talk about the ST Plus there. You can see I mentioned I would get to that earlier. So when you have the brass, as I said, you have the S star, which indicates the composition of the alloy. In this case, this is steel, so it's a little bit different. Uh, ST just means Stahl, steel, straightforward there. And then apparently the plus just means it's improved strength. And I say apparently because that's a little bit ambiguous. I wasn't able to find any better information than that, um, but from the sources I was finding, that's just kind of what it says. So, better case than just an ST, I suppose. So that about covers it for this video. Uh, at this point, I'm just gonna look at these cases, and if you wanna stick around, I'm just gonna open up the other one. Like I said, I haven't actually opened these SS cases, or boxes yet, um, and I'll just talk a bit about them. Uh, but other than that, uh, that does cover all the information for this video, so with that, let's move on to these. So we've got a, uh, these are definitely in pretty bad shape. You can see we've got a fair bit of rust. The uh, the box itself, you can see there's some, what looks like water damage here on the front of it. Some of the primers are, uh, I'm not, another thing I'm checking also is I don't hear a single one of these, or I can't, actually, here we go. There's one round I can feel powder shaking in. The rest of these, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust these. Interesting. Those are cool. I don't want to get these mixed up, so I'm going to slide these off to the side, because I would like to put them back in their correct box. But let's get this next one open now. And uh, this one is actually in a little bit worse condition. Got a bit crushed there as well as you can see. So again, I'm going to make a cut so I can carefully open this off camera and not destroy the box, hopefully. Here we go, second box. want to keep these separate. As far as the cases are concerned, these are in much better condition. We've still got some rust on these around the shoulder. All the information on these does match though, so that is cool. We do have some... We have more rust on these on the heads. However, so they look better for a camera. At any rate, yeah, these all match in terms of the information provided on the head stamp and on the box. So. Really cool, really cool rounds. I'm not the biggest ammo collector. If I was, I would love to have shown an example of what those tracer uh, boxes look like. As I said, they do have a slightly different formatting where they add on the tracer information after the primer. So just keep that in mind if you get any of those. Unfortunately, that's not one I was able to show in this video. But hopefully you found that helpful uh, and uh, maybe a little bit interesting too. Other than that, I'll get these put away. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if you have any other questions, and uh, also, especially for a video like this, I would say I'm not an expert. I know enough to talk about what I just talked about in this video, but if you have anything else to add, then by all means, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, and if I said anything wrong, 
which I hope I did not, and I don't think I did, but if I did, feel free to correct me. Uh, I would hate to just be wrong out here. I would, I would prefer to be corrected. So, Other than that, thank you all a bunch for watching. This has been a cool, uh, admittedly longer than I thought, video. An interesting topic nonetheless. So thank you all for watching. See you all in the next one. Take care.